recently I've been buying some old vintage um, chips like back from the 70s and 80s and then so I decided that um, for my next project I'm going to do a Atari 2600 clone using the original ICs so anyway in anticipation of that I bought uh, three games the first one is Defender Berserk and Combat which is like a army tank game I just want to quickly show you uh, the printout of the six button version of the Atari 2600 schematic uh, and this has been my source that I used for designing a PCB in order to do this Atari 2600 clone. And that brings us to this DHL package that arrived today. One can only hope that this is the PCBs that I ordered. So yeah, it's my PCB and because the Atari 2600 was black I decided to go for a black solder mask. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was go for a red um, silk screen and the silk screen is like where you have the text on that but unfortunately um, there's not a lot of contrast like a uh, red silk screen does not show up very well over black so yeah last time I'll do that. Alright so after a few days of assembly this is the finished board and it might be a little hard to see because it's so black um, but these over here are uh, sockets for the dip so I'm not going to solder directly instead I'm going to put these old um, chips into these sockets. These chips were stubborn but I finally got them in. I'll just introduce you to each of them. So this one here is known as the TIA which stands for Television Interface Adapter and it uh, ultimately connects to the audio and video. Um, this is just a buffer. It sort of works in conjunction with the television interface adapter. This is the 6507 8-bit CPU. It's essentially just like the 6502. However, it has less pins and a smaller package. It's only 28 pins. And this guy here is known as the Riot, which I think it stands for RAM, I.O., and Timer and uh, it's sort of involved in reading in the, the values uh, from the ports and there is I think a small little bit of memory maybe 256 bytes so yeah um, I think I'm going to plug it in now and see if it blows up or not alright so this is crazy I turned it on and uh, I'm actually getting a display which is great uh, the color's changing. Um, it, it could be something, there's a color burst thing. I'm probably not synced up there. I also have no joystick. Um, but this game Combat is supposed to have little army tanks. So this kind of looks the same. Or it looks, it sort of matches the theme. Okay, that must be start. Oh, okay. So I think... I'm able to press select and it's choosing different games. So yeah, this is cool. Um, again, no joystick though. So yeah, I don't know if it was apparent in the last little edit, but um, we have sound, which is pretty cool. I've had some setbacks uh, with the Riot chip. This one here um, that's the original Riot chip that I put in here and things mostly worked however I was not able to um, use the joystick and uh, move to the right like it didn't recognize basically joystick to the right so then I ordered two replacement Riots um, this one here overheated and didn't work at all and this one here the second replacement or the third Riot altogether it doesn't overheat but um, video doesn't display or anything anyway to overcome the problems I was having with the riot chip I decided to um, design this little circuit board here basically as a substitute for the riot so it's my intent for this to be more or less compatible um, so 
this is a dedicated RAM chip so that's going to be the the RAM part of the riot and then this is a programmable logic device so I'm going to program the timer and then also the IO decoder and hopefully um, this will work okay so I had to tweak um, the firmware uh, adjust the timing a little bit that's why this ugly wire is here and the other thing I had to do is I had to open up um, this joystick it's like a Genesis knockoff and add some pull-ups in order um, for it to work but I think things are working now and let's try out some games hello yeah so that's Daniel and he's gonna help me try out some of these games uh, the first one that we're going to do is uh, Asteroids. And the awesome soundtrack is Jaws. Yeah. It's a lot like Jaws. So I guess we can say that Asteroids works. And we hear the sound loud and clear. Okay, I'm gonna try and play Berserk. Now let's see if you're good at it. Yeah, probably not. I don't have to be good because the AI in it is non-existent. They just run into the wall and stuff. This is Space Invaders, uh, for the Atari. Yeah. No. Now here's something interesting, and I don't know the specifics. But the Atari 2600, I think, only supports two or three sprites. So in order to create this effect, it's like the programmer had to like continuously reposition those sprites as the uh, television beam, the video beam, was like going across horizontally, painting the screen. So it's quite a feat for the time. So this is Yar's Revenge. Yeah, go for it. So this is, so that, that middle ground, Daniel, with the weird video effect, mm -hmm. is uh, a safe thing. You, you can't kill, your shots are, won't be lethal from there. But you can't get killed from there either. Last but not least, we got the Defender. Yes. I'm pretty sure my friend had this growing up, and maybe even my aunt at one point. Oh. As you can tell, I suck at this game. The controls are less smooth on it, like by design. Literally, my tactic. <laughs> The thing that's cool about this game is that right above the play area, there's like a little map. That I can kind of disappear into. That's in incredible that uh, they're able to do that. Because these cartridges typically only had 4K or 8K of memory. Yeah, there's a certain charm to these games for sure. But yeah, it looks pretty good, Defender. Do you find this game's aged well? Uh, I don't know. I suck! 
Yeah, it's all good though. So this was kind of fun. You got to see some games. Some of these games are like 40 years old, roughly. And uh, I don't know, they're, they're still kind of fun, I think, for such old games. 